It has been a big week in EV news. There are production numbers that are very good, production numbers that are not quite as good. And of course, you've got some heartbreaking news from one of the best car models in the world. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> So I got Randy joining me here and Randy, I don't know how to break it to you. This is going to be a real devastating one here, but the best car, the Fiat has been paused. The 500 E hatchback production, uh, is due to slow sales. Can you believe that that car for a whole lot of money isn't selling like hotcakes? Yeah, I don't, you know, I know Fiat, you know, if you, most people wouldn't have a clue that Fiat's a very big deal in Europe. Oh, yeah, uh, especially and, in Italy, especially in Italy. And uh, they're kind of the base of Stellantis. I mean, they're the, the kind of the base part of Stellantis. And so but uh, yeah, they're um, apparently not doing that well. In fact, Stellantis is kind of in trouble. Fiat sold just 204 examples stateside. I guess when you sell that few, you can just call them examples because uh, so far this year. <sighs> oh. Now, I've uh, had an opportunity to test drive one uh, oh. at Platt Auto in uh, Milwaukee, Oregon, near oh. Portland, just south of Portland. It's fine. It's a fun little car. Oh. Uh, the one that they had was quite affordable and quite low range. The pause in production begins September 13th and is happening as a result of a lack of orders in the European market. Car and driver reached out to them and we'll update it. Uh, and of course, because it's Stellantis, we got to go hybrid because if people don't like your car, definitely make it worse. <laughs> I don't know if that's a Fiat thing or a Stellantis thing, but uh, I don't know, man. They're uh, investing $110 million in the factory in Turin uh, to be able to implement a higher performance battery. That's that's good news. Um, yeah. Now, not all all the news is good, Randy. Not all the news is good. Car giants are being forced to confront some hard truths about the EV transition. Uh, European car giants are struggling to come to terms with the perfect storm of challenges. Volvo announced it had abandoned its heavily promoted plan to produce only EVs by 2030. You heard about that? I absolutely heard about that. And uh, I was very surprised because I thought they were really going to do it. I really did, too. They're well positioned. They've got the Chinese manufacturing. They've got both European and Chinese engineering. They've got enough experience doing it and then of course crisis stricken volkswagen yeah little little dramatic there cnbc uh and several others including ford and mercedes have all announced plans to delay their earlier targets to phase out internal combustion in europe what's going on what are they dealing what what is this perfect storm of challenges randy kirk well you know the perfect storm of challenges is that you start out making the wrong cars and then you put them out at not very good value um, and you produce them with very small ranges um, and you make them kind of look like, in many cases, just the same car that you would have bought but with, with an uh, electric ca capability. Um, you haven't really provided the consumer with a lot of excitement in, in, in terms of what to buy. And... Elon has said, you know, it's one of my favorite quotes from him. He says, if you, if you can't give the consumer a, a, a good value proposition, a good product, or a, 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 I forget the word, I'm gonna, unfortunately, the word has escaped me, but if you're not going to give people a great product at a great price, don't be in business. It's tricky. Every product has a price. There's this, this widget, I shall sell for $100. Is it worth now? I've seen hundred dollar widgets that I think I would have paid five hundred for that, and I've seen hundred dollar widgets where I'd say, if it was five dollars, I would think about it. Um, so there's a lot of gap in uh, utility for value. When I hear a manufacturer say people don't want EVs, what I hear them say is people don't want our EVs at the price at which we sell them. But I think that's unfortunate. And then, of course, uh, this means that everyone's doing badly, right? Everyone. China becomes the world's first nation to sell over a million EVs in a month. <laughs> yes, they will probably be one of the only nations to sell over a million EVs in a month. The United States would have to be almost up to 100% to get to a million a month. 
Yeah, I think we're only at 20 million in total for for a normal year. So yeah, we'd need to be well no, north no, of 50%. No, no, about 14 million. Is it really only 14? Yeah, well, oh, the, I think the best dear. I think the best I think the best year ever was about 18, maybe 17, 5, 18. Mm -hmm. And so and lately though it's been down I think in the 15s maybe 14 I can't remember exactly but yeah we're way off a couple million dollars off our average mm -hmm. couple million units off our average mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what I'm not seeing yeah globally uh, so this isn't quite making clear if all million are pure electric or if yes. they're or if they're hybrid but the BEV share is growing in China yes. and while plugins can make more sense in markets where you don't have access to home charging, yes. it can be very uh, difficult. And what China is doing is uh, making, because the switch to electric is required, it's not optional, uh, they're making all of the pieces work. They're, they're setting up uh, charging everywhere. They're mandating it in uh, new garages and whatnot uh, so that it can actually happen. EVs, Randy? Are they ever going to catch on? Well, you know, in China, you're also, there was another headline just last week also that they reached over 50%. The, the combination, again, of, of all EVs, all, they call them new new vehicles or new, new energy. Mm -hmm. New energy, that's it, new energy vehicles. So the NEVs, the combination of all NEVs reached over 50% of all sales in China. Uh, we also have in Europe... Um, I think it was uh, Norway. I want to say Norway. That's over fifty percent of the cars on the road now. Oh wow! Are, are BEVs? Yeah, are and, EV, and I, EVs. And I believe it's Norway where they hit ninety six percent. Seven, yeah, something like that in yeah. terms of total yes. uh, new vehicle sales. And you got to wonder about that four percent still buying a straight dyno burner. I hope. My hope is that there are people with applications that absolutely require it, where they're saying, look, we do, you know, we we just can't, for whatever reason, electrify. There's some some legitimate scientific objective that makes it not work for their use case. I don't know how common that is. Uh, my question in the comments would be, would be, what is the holdup? What is the holdup? Uh, and I don't need to hear 900 stories from the definitely very real and not in any way orchestrated people who live in Northwest Texas and need to drive a back road to Arizona. Because every video when I talk about range anxiety, I get people who simply must do that exact drive all the time, which happens to be a bit of a charging desert, but it's also a bit of a car desert because no one makes that drive, you guys. There's like 10 people who have to regularly do that drive and all 10 of them plus all of their friends comment on every video where I talk about range anxiety and it's not convincing. I see through you. There would be there would be types. There would be uh, model, mod design uh, re, you know, constrictions. So if I want a minivan or if I want a a step side van, or if I want a, um, uh, a flatbed truck, uh, you know, or if I want a little mini uh, pickup truck or things like that. So, I mean, there's people, there are people that do have those use cases where it would be very difficult to use a Model Y uh, it, where you're normally using a small pickup truck. For sure. Uh, yeah. I, I would agree with that completely. Uh, there is a point at which there is a little bit of overlap there when you get from passenger vehicle to commercial vehicle, where it's a, uh, yeah, like a small pickup would still be a passenger vehicle. Um, we're going to talk about this one more tomorrow, but uh, Tesla Model 3 blows past EPA rating, traveling 370 miles in full range test at 70 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour. So if you need to go more than 370 miles, oh, come on, man, that's hours of driving. That's that's over four hours nonstop at 70 miles an hour. And that's they did the test. Five hours, Brian. What? Th didn't you say 370 divided by 70? Yeah. Well, that'd be over five hours. Oh yeah, yeah five hours. Look at you go with your math there, Randy. Yeah, well, um, I had to do it. I, I, I'm so sorry, but. And they and they also did the test at 80 and still got fantastic range, but I don't yeah. see it in front of me here. Yeah, they these the anxiety of the past 
is something that I've almost exclusively seen from people who've never owned an electric car. I've talked about, well, I rented one for a week and I was anxious the whole time. Yeah, it's different when it's a rental though. Yes. You know, I, I, I don't expect you to have the full experience. I don't expect you to have home charging at that point. And that's one of the biggest benefits that you get from something like this. Well, I still have, I still have BAD because, you know, I'm sitting here running, you know what BAD is, right? No. Battery anxiety disorder. Oh yeah, sure. Laptop is going to go brick on me if I don't plug that in. There we go. Okay. I, I, I get the same with my watch. I always forget yeah. to charge it until yeah. it says you're at 15%. And then I go, oh, for crying out loud, I forgot to charge it. And then yeah, I'll leave that. it on the charger and forget that too. My wife and I have literally been under the zero on our Model Y three times. Wow. And we know we had read and we understood that there's about 16 to 20 miles extra. And, uh, you know, that it's not showing. So we weren't necessarily testing it, <laughs> but we we knew that if we could if we if we did have that fifteen to twenty miles, we could make it home. And uh, so, yeah, I also like to live dangerously. I've run out of gas before quite a few times in my life because the empty doesn't really tell you much. The cars yes. that say here's how many miles you have remaining, once you get under about twenty, they go, eh, you're kind of on your own figure it out. And it's like, well, what? And then you go to the gas pump, then fill it all the way up and check compared to the size of the tank. And you're like, I still had like yeah, 40 yeah. miles left. Oh, come on. So I don't know, better data. And I've never had a gas car that would say, by the way, you're getting into some territory where you may not have access to a gas station. That either. And I spent several blocks of time over a period of years as a travel writer in Montana. And there are places where if you don't stop for gas, you might, it might be a quarter tank before you find the next station, uh, which gets real stressful in a hurry. Yes. I don't, yes. I don't have that with intelligent trip planning. You guys in the comments, uh, I don't know. What do we miss? What do we misunderstand? Uh, how much you miss us? How awesome are we? Tell us how awesome we are in the comments below. That's the real important part. And uh, I think Randy's experiencing an earthquake uh, because uh, everything's a little shaky. Uh, but that's Randy's analysis. He's his analysis is shaky. It fits the it fits the profile. So I'm excited about that. And everybody else, you know, like subscribe, do what you got to do. Head on over to the Randy Kirk channel. See what he's up to. Who knows? It might even be it might even be something interesting. I make no guarantees, uh, but uh, everybody else, uh, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots uh, in the future where you'll be driving an electric car.